Hi there, nice people, hello lady and gentlemen. Tonight I'm starting a series of videos on how to sharpen any knife, long, short, wide, thick, skinny, tiny, using this device. This is WorkSharp Professional Precision Adjust Tool. How professional really is it, I'll let you decide. Because the real professional is going to use a stone wheel, a professional grade belt sander, or whetstones. This device, its purpose is to help somebody like myself, who's not a professional sharpener, to achieve results that are close to being professional. What do I mean by results? Here's a knife, very sharp from the factory, Benchmade Factory Edge, and it does a fantastic job cutting paper. Push cutting, slice cutting, it's sharp. Here's a knife that I sharpened, also bail out with the M4 steel, and this is how it cuts. So basically, the results I got give me a lot of control. But that's not all. The way I determine the sharpness of a knife is using paper towel, not attached to a roll, not under tension. I just simply try to cut it with a knife, either slow or fast. This knife here either doesn't bite in or it tends to tear. That's the factory edge. I'll flip it over. Here's my edge and here what that does. It's a cut. It's a cut. That's the difference between a factory edge and an edge you put on yourself. That's what I would call a professional grade edge. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, now would be a good time to bump that subscribe button. And if you are a regular viewer, don't forget to hit the notification bell symbol. That will allow you to be informed when my next video comes out. Thanks. Time to introduce the inclinometer or angle finder that came with the set. It measures angles in quarter degree increments or with quarter degree precision. Not plus or minus quarter degree, rather plus or minus 0.125 or 125 thousandths of a degree. Before you use it, you have to zero it out. To do that, I place it on the base of the device and then press the zero button. The reason I place it on the device itself and not on the bench top is because there could be a difference in how horizontal those two surfaces are. And now I have an important secret to share with you. It is how I clamp my blade. I don't try to mount it perpendicular to the jaws. I rotate it on an angle and then I am not trying to hit the middle of the blade. I position the blade as to minimize the angle deviation, the actual secondary bevel or the edge angle deviation from the back of the blade to the tip. And these variations can be significant. So allow me to illustrate. I'm going to place my angle finder on the rod. It's magnetically attached and the angle is random. I have not set the angle yet. I just want to illustrate that at the back it was 21 degrees. In the middle it's 22 and three quarters. And over there it's uh, 22 and a half. So there are variations because the distance from the edge, from the apex to the edge, to the pivot of the rod varies. And this is an important concept to understand, so let me sketch a little bit. So if this is your blade and uh, I'm drawing the lines from the pivot of the media carrier, or abrasive carrier, to the points of contact on the edge. And let's call them X, X1, and X2 those distances and x is not equal x1 and it's not equal x2 as you can see on the sketch. 
So let's look at it from the side. If we were looking, let's say, from left to right of the tool. So here's our edge. And if I drew a straight line representing the rod upon which the carrier is riding, the angles will be varying at the back, at the tip, and in the middle. If that's the right angle. So if we call them alphas, then alpha 1 is not equal alpha, and it's not equal alpha 2. So these angles vary. So why would they call this type of tool a fixed angle sharpener? Because once you fix the angle on the device, you don't change it throughout the sharpening process. And this is, for some reason, a difficult concept for a lot of folks to understand based on the type of comments I get sometimes on uh, videos about this device. The consistency of an angle, the relationship between primary bevel and the secondary bevel is not as critical as forming a very consistent surfaces on your secondary bevel. So your apex determines how sharp your knife is, the angle of your apex and the radius at the tip of the apex. Check out some of uh, Dr. Laren Thomas' books and um, videos about that. You're trying to form that continuous plane that goes from the back of the blade to the tip and that's what defines how sharp your knife is. If that plane deviates an angle from the primary bevel, it doesn't matter. So it will constitute itself as your edge being slightly wider toward the ends and slightly narrower in the middle. But the symmetricity will be there and that's what is important. And the fact that your apex doesn't wobble doesn't do this. So this is difficult for somebody who is an amateur, like myself, to achieve on a whetstone, on the wheel grinder, even on the belt sander. And that's why this device is kind of like a crutch that helps you <laughs> to become a better sharp. Once you understand all these concepts, switching to a more sophisticated method like whetstone will be a lot easier than if you start learning with the whetstone first. Once you know what the sharp edge is, then you can actually expand and uh, be better. So this is my introduction uh, to some of the concepts that are associated with using a fixed angle sharpener. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to find the factory secondary bevel angle or edge angle and how to select the angle that you actually want to end up with. And then we'll get into prepping and selecting the grinding media, etc.